So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. God created man and woman to live forever without diseases and death. Sin condemned the human race to death and consequently to disease. At the appointed time, the Son of God came in person to demonstrate that He is the God that cures the sick. Later, He Himself ordered, Heal the sick. Through His messenger, Ellen G. White, God gave instructions for the Seventh-day Adventist Church to establish hospitals and sanitariums all over the world to help in healing the sick. She wrote, Sanitariums are to be established in different countries that are entered by our missionaries and are to be centers from which a work of healing, restoring, and educating shall be carried on. Following these instructions, the Seventh-day Adventist Church initiated the construction of hospitals and clinics around the world. First, the Western Health Reform Institute in Battle Creek, Michigan, in 1866, that later became the Battle Creek Sanitarium. Its medical director was the famous Adventist physician, surgeon, inventor, and scientist, John Harvey Kellogg. More hospitals were established in other states and countries, Mexico, Thailand, Brazil, Korea, China, and Puerto Rico. On July 25, 1898, arrived in Puerto Rico the United States military forces through the Bay of Guanica. This set the stage for the beginning of the Adventist medical work in Puerto Rico. Three years later, in 1901, the American Army brought from the Battle Creek Sanitarium a man by the name of David Trail, who worked as a medical assistant to be the director of the small hospital of the little town of Las Marias. Apparently, while living in Las Marias, Mr. Trail met Mr. Adrian Grief, who was the general manager of the sugar mill in Guanica. They developed a good friendship. Sugarcane production was the primary industry in Puerto Rico at that time. January 12, 1903, five years after the Americans entered the island by Guanica's Bay, the South Puerto Rican Sugar Company, known as the Central Guanica, began operations in Ensenada, a sector of the town of Guanica. From there, they loaded cargo ships with sacks of sugar to market in the United States. Mr. Adrian Griff, the administrator of the South Puerto Rico Sugar Company, got sick. Most likely by recommendations from Mr. David Trail, he traveled to Battle Creek, Michigan to be taken care of at the Adventist Hospital, the Battle Creek Sanitarium. He was so grateful for the care he received at the sanitarium that he requested Dr. Kellogg to send one of his physicians to become the company physician. Eventually, five of them came from the Battle Creek Sanitarium to Puerto Rico. First, Dr. Walter Martin, who arrived at the sugar mill in 1909. He worked for the term of one year and then went back to Battle Creek in 1910. Again, the South Puerto Rico Sugar Company asked Dr. Kellogg to send another Adventist physician to the company. This time, Dr. Harry Knapp came to Puerto Rico. He worked for two years, from 1910 to 1912, when for health reasons he went back home. For the third time, the South Puerto Rico Sugar Company asked the Battle Creek Sanitarium to send another Adventist physician. This time, they sent Dr. John Morse, who worked for eight years. When he left town, folks were very appreciative, and the whole community was very grateful for his medical professionalism. Dr. Morse was recognized as one of the distinguished citizens of Guanica. The city government still keeps this picture of him among several other pictures of distinguished Puerto Rican personalities. Again, and for the fourth time, 
the administration of the South Puerto Rico Sugar Company calls for another Adventist physician. This time, Dr. William Colby Doscom was chosen. He had also served for five years as a missionary physician in Africa and another five years in Japan. After a long journey by boat, he arrived to San Juan, where the manager of the sugar company was waiting for him. They traveled by train to Guanica. There, Dr. Morse was waiting for him. Along with Dr. Duscom came his wife, Hattie, and his children, Dorothy, Colby, and Lois. They went to live in the township of Ensenada, where the Guanica Sugar Company was located. They lived in this house, which was provided by the company. Dr. Morse returned home in 1920. Dr. Duscombe worked as a surgeon and as a general practitioner. He took care of the administrators, the factory employees, and the thousands of country people that worked in the cane harvest. The sugar company had its own hospital, and next to it was the pharmacy. Laborers in the cane harvest worked 12-hour shifts and earned 70 cents per day's work. They all lived in poverty. Malaria was rampant among the population. Dr. Doscombe spent long hours attending the patients in his office and visiting them in their homes. He traveled by foot, on horseback, and by ox cart. During six months out of the year, there was no work. This time was known as Tiempo Muerto, the dead season. People had no money to buy neither food nor medicines. Dr. Duscombe would give them plantains, rice, beans, and other produce. He distributed them freely to the needy in Ensenada and Guanica three days a week. He would also give out medicines or money to buy them. Besides being the company physician, Dr. Duscombe was also the physician and surgeon of the municipal hospital in Guanica. At the same time, the sugar company allowed him to hold a private practice after working hours. This gave him the opportunity to meet people from other towns. Among them, he met Don Juan Marie Ramos, a businessman from Mayagüez. In 1933, the Doscom family suffered a family tragedy. Their daughter, Louise, died of leukemia while studying at the Pacific Union College in California. Dr. Duscom could not attend the funeral. This experience makes the family more dedicated to the Lord's mission. They built a church in Guanica in memory of their daughter, Louise. There is a plaque at the entrance of the church that bears witness to this tragedy. This experience reaffirmed them in their dream of building an Adventist medical missionary hospital in Mayagüez. His fame as a missionary physician and philanthropist extended to the nearby towns in the west of Puerto Rico. Many patients from the city of Mayagüez, including Don Juan Marie Ramos, urged him to establish his medical practice in that urban center. In 1940, 20 years after he began working for the South Puerto Rico Sugar Company, at the end of his contract, his friend, Don Juan Marie Ramos, suggested to Dr. Duscombe to buy the St. Mary's Hospital in Mayagüez. This hospital was practically new. It had four houses ready for occupancy by the physicians. Its owner, Dr. Ramirez Cuerda, had placed it for auction. Dr. Duscombe got the bid for $30,000. This building was located on the campus of the College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts, right across from what nowadays is the Mayagüez Town Center. In May of 1941, Dr. Duscombe's son, Dr. Colby William Duscombe, joins him in the medical practice. He was a recent graduate from a specialty in eyes, nose, and throat. Along with him came his wife, Phyllis, a graduate nurse. In September of that same year, at the invitation of Dr. Colby Doscombe 
arrived another physician, Dr. Charles Moore, with specialty in surgery and general medicine. With these three physicians and three graduate nurses, Ms. Florence Hansen, Mrs. Rose Vollmer, and Mrs. Phyllis Duscom, and a few practical nurses with Jose Tirado and his wife Lucy in the laboratory, Herminio Garcia in the diet department, and Gloria, his wife, as a nurse, the St. Mary's Hospital initiates its operations, now under the name of Duscom Hospital. From its very beginning, it was a real success. The city of Mayagüez had a population of 70,000 people at that time. Two years after having purchased the St. Mary's Hospital in 1942, and due to the need for the College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts to expand, the college expropriates the Duscombe Hospital for the amount of $75,000 to establish the Institute of Tropical Agriculture. This building still stands as a historical building. There is a plaque that identifies the building, and it says, this building was the site for the first private hospital in the city of Mayagüez. This hospital was founded by the Adventist Church missionaries in the early years of the 20th century. Later, this building was bought by the College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts to establish the Institute of Tropical Agriculture. After the expropriation of the Duscombe Hospital, Don Juan Marie saw that his friend, Dr. Doscom, did not have a place where to continue his medical practice. Then, Don Juan Marie offered to sell Dr. Doscom a big house in Mendes Vigo Street so that he could continue his practice. With the money received from the expropriation of the hospital, Dr. Doscom purchased this big house from Don Juan Marie and converted it into a polyclinic with offices for himself, his son, Dr. Colby Doscom, and Dr. Charles Moore. He prepared rooms for examinations, treatment rooms, x-ray, laboratory, and other services. He named it Donscom Clinic. Shortly after, other physicians and nurses arrived and joined the work at the clinic. When the Bella Vista Hospital was in full operation years later, the name of Duscom Clinic was changed to Policlinica Bella Vista, as it's still known today. The surgery cases were performed at the Ramirez Clinic, just across the street from the Duscom Clinic. In 1940, Dr. Duscom purchased a house up in the hill of Cerro Las Mesas. It served as his residence, which also served as a meeting place for the families working in the clinic. Since there was so much poverty in Mayagüez, the Adventist physicians established what they called a charity clinic in the first Mayagüez Seventh-day Adventist Church. There, they provided medical services to people that could not afford to pay for a private visit. These services were given for only 50 cents per visit. The rooms upstairs were used as dormitories for practical nursing students. As the physicians felt the need to have their own hospital to give the best quality of hospital and medical care to the people of Mayagüez, they resigned to their fees and rather accepted a missionary wage and set themselves to the idea of building a hospital. Don Juan Marie Ramos, Dr. Doscom's friend, was also the owner of a piece of land of five acres up in the hill of Cerro Las Mesas. He offered the property for sale to Dr. Doscom for $11,000. Dr. Doscom accepted the offer and bought the five acres of land. Plans were made to build the 20 beds hospital at a cost of $75,000 with the idea of expanding it later on. A fundraising campaign among the churches and the general public was developed. When the federal government became aware of the project, they offered Dr. Duscombe to fund 
two-thirds of the total cost if the hospital was built for 75 beds. This was accepted, and the plans were changed to build an 82-bed hospital. Dr. Duscombe made a $14,000 donation, the largest individual donation, and at the same time, he was actively looking for donors. The architect prepared the floor plans for an 82-bed hospital at a cost of $75,000, including the equipment. In April of 1950, the groundbreaking ceremony was conducted at the building site. Dr. Duscombe named it Bella Vista, which in English means beautiful view, because of the location, the panoramic view, the beauty of the flowers and the trees and the tropical surroundings. The 7th of February, 1951, the construction of the hospital started officially. However, by December 23 of that same year, the construction was halted because of the lack of money and the failure to meet the contract. The construction was resumed on April of 1952. Nevertheless, in September, the construction was halted again, this time for six months. The builder in charge of the project went bankrupt. There were many financial problems and the work was very poor. In March of 1953, and as a providential occurrence, God sent from Cuba Brother Alfred L. Christensen. He took charge of the building project. National workers also joined in this building venture. On June 3rd, another class in practical nursing was initiated, so as to have nurses available by the time the hospital opened for services. The instructors were Mrs. Hattie Duscombe, Mrs. Phyllis Duscombe, Miss Florence Hansen, and Mrs. Rose Vollmer. On January 4, 1954, the Bella Vista Hospital and Sanitarium officially opened its doors for service. The first patient, Mr. Juan Rodriguez, a World War II veteran, was admitted. In time, the name Sanitarium was dropped and it remained Bella Vista Hospital. In these early beginnings, they were short of money and equipment. Even surgery gloves and other materials were recycled for other procedures. From this moment on, Dr. Duscombe accepted a missionary salary of $350 a month. Whatever he earned over this amount, he donated to the hospital. Years later, other missionaries came, physicians, dentists, nurses, technicians in different areas, pharmacists, maintenance personnel, and others. Also, other Puerto Rican Adventist physicians joined the missionary work. By this time, the Duscombe Hall is built next to the hospital. It served as a dormitory for the nurses that did not have transportation and for those that attended school while working. Dr. Duscombe donated $40,000 for the construction of this building that would later serve as the School of Nursing. Before the construction of the Duscombe Hall, the nurses lived on the second floor of the charity clinic at the First Adventist Church of Mayagüez and unoccupied rooms of the hospital. Today, the Duscombe Hall holds the administrative offices. On May 12, the first set of twins were born, Martha and Meredith Snyder. On June 10, the blood bank was established. On Friday, August 22, Dr. William C. Duscombe suffered a fall in the banana grove behind his home. The next day, he was taken to the hospital. He was suffering from very serious internal bleeding. His condition worsened as the hours passed by. The physicians performed many blood transfusions and did all they could to bring him back to health, but it was all in vain. Sadly, 
Dr. Duscombe died on Monday, August 24, 1959, at the age of 78. Dr. Duscombe gave 49 years of his life to the medical missionary work. Of this, 39 were rendered in Puerto Rico. He was buried in Forest Lawn Cemetery, Glendale, California. Days before his death, he had expressed three wishes. First, that the hospital be enlarged and would become an institution of great human care recognized for its services and professionalism. Second, that it had its own school of nursing. And third, that a boarding academy be constructed for the young people of Mayagüez near the hospital, where the students could go to school and work in the hospital to pay for their tuition. These three wishes became a reality. The Municipal Assembly of City of Mayagüez named one of the most important avenues in Mayagüez as the William C. Duscombe Avenue, in recognition for his humanitarian work and his contribution to the health of the people of Mayagüez. The 7th of September, the new emergency unit was opened for service, the most modern of the day in all the western part of Puerto Rico. January 15, new X-ray equipment was installed. The 4th of August, the School of Nursing begins with a diploma program with 10 students. Barbara McDonald worked untiringly in the establishment of this school. July 1, 1966, the first Medicare patient was admitted. In order to provide more nurses, another class of auxiliary nurses graduates. On May 19, 1968, the first graduation of the School of Nursing was held. Ten nurses graduated and they all passed the boards on the first attempt. The first male students were admitted to the School of Nursing. The hospital surpassed its patient capacity and plans were initiated to add a new wing. They brought in a fundraising consultant, Mr. Milton Mary, to direct the fundraising campaign in the community and Pastor Fred Hernandez, chaplain, to coordinate the project and assist Mr. Mary in the fundraising program. A civic committee was organized in Mayagüez to support the expansion of the hospital. Mr. Ismael Lozada, an industrialist, was elected its president. Another 18 such committees were organized, one in each town of the western area. Another such committee was organized in the year 2002 under the presidency of Elisamuel Rivera for the construction of the emergency unit as it stands today. The construction of the much-awaited South Wing began in 1972. The Honorable Luis A. Ferre, governor of Puerto Rico, was the guest of honor in this occasion. After two years of construction, the new wing was inaugurated with the new cafeteria, the first and second floors with 75 additional beds for a total capacity of 157 beds. The governor at this time was the Honorable Rafael Hernandez Colon and he was the guest of honor on this occasion. He performed the ribbon cutting ceremony and he also welcomed the first patient to enter the new wing. In May 1974, the graduation of the last class of the Graduate School of Nursing Diploma Degree took place. After this, it became part of the undergraduate program of Antillian College, now Antillian Adventist University. In recent years, several facilities of the hospital have been remodeled, expanded, additional services offered, and new modern equipments have been installed. The emergency room has been enlarged twice, the last of which includes a total remodeling that concluded in October of 2003. Additional parking spaces have been added, pediatric facilities have been modernized, 
the facilities in nursery and maternity have been updated, we added the concept of birth in, in which the mother chooses to give birth in her own room, and that of rooming in, in which the mother is giving the privilege of keeping her baby in the room with her. The facade of the hospital was changed, and a balcony was built for each room. More surgery rooms were added and modernized. A new endoscopy room was added. The intensive care unit modernized. The x-ray department reconstructed and expanded. A new laboratory was built, the most modern in all of Western Puerto Rico. The lobby was totally modernized and the gift shop was relocated, modernized and expanded. Another committee was organized in the year 2002 under the presidency of Elisamuel Rivera for the construction of the emergency unit as it stands today. The recently inaugurated emergency room has 22 cubicles, two rooms for special procedures, a spacious waiting room, three windows for conducting interviews, and modern equipments were installed. Modern and very sophisticated equipments have been installed in most clinical departments. New hurricane-proof windows have been installed. New central air conditioning units have also been installed. A well was drilled so as to provide water in case of an emergency. Many other improvements have also been made. The maternity department has been named Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Benjamin Leduc, in appreciation for his 38 years of uninterrupted service to this department at the Bella Vista Hospital. The hospital received authorization to establish a residency in family medicine. This program allows for 16 residents. 20 physicians have graduated so far. The chapel was built and inaugurated as a much-needed facility. It provides a place for emotional and spiritual support to the patients, families, and employees. Thanks to a generous donation by Dr. Millie Werner, a beautiful glass-stained window was installed. Dedicated chaplains have served the institution since its very start. Singing to the patients has been an activity of the chaplaincy, and it is very much appreciated by the patients, their families, and the employees. On September 21, 1998, Hurricane Georges completely destroyed the polyclinic building, thus making it necessary to relocate after 56 years of continuous service at Mendes Vigo Street. A new building was purchased, the Veterans Clinic on Highway No. 2. The operations of the Polyclinic, the Bella Vista Health Plan, the pharmacy, and the ambulatory physical therapy are carried from there. In February 2004, the design and development of the park in front of the hospital was started. This was donated by David Jimenez, a friend of the hospital. This park is frequently used by visitors. Very soon, we will have in operation the Bella Vista Wound Care Center. In these 50 years, the hospital has been administered by Leslie Dunn, Victor Dirksen, Royce Thompson, Erwin Burke, Frank Perez, Nemuel Artiles, Ruth Ortiz, and Ornan Martinez. It is worth mentioning the professional work done by the different nursing directors during these 50 years. The medical staff is made up of approximately 200 prestigious physicians, highly qualified and experienced in most of the specialties and subspecialties. The hospital family is made up of 635 employees. This is the greatest resource in offering quality service to those who seek in this Christian institution the fountain of physical and spiritual health. 
The conference room has been named after Susana Peyot, nursing director for many years and who worked very zealously to achieve the highest quality in nursing care. Most appropriately, this conference room bears her name. Another outstanding employee was Mr. Noel Lavoy, who worked in the radiology and imaging department for 37 years. These facilities bear his name in recognition of his dedicated and unselfish labors. Another great accomplishment during these 50 years was the establishment of an academy, a high school level institution that would serve the children of the employees and also the children of the friends of the hospital. One very important institution that had its beginning with the hospital was the local church. This began in the recovery room up in the third floor. After some years, the church meetings were held in the auditorium, and years later, the actual church sanctuary was built where they meet every Sabbath. This offers an atmosphere of peace, rest, and spiritual refuge to the personnel. The hospital was founded on the philosophy that the human being is integrated by the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects reflected on its logo, and hence, it should be treated as such. During these 50 years, the Bella Vista Hospital has provided its services based on the philosophy of restoring mankind and will continue to do so in the upcoming years. There have been many that have known Jesus and accepted Him as their personal Savior through the services and the personnel. Today, we owe what Bella Vista Hospital is to the dreams of Dr. William Colby Doscombe and his wife, Hattie, to his son, Dr. Colby Doscombe and his wife, Phyllis, to the missionaries, to the physician staff members, to the hundreds of employees that through the years have given the best of their lives to this institution, to the citizens of Western Puerto Rico, and above all, to our God. As a historical memorial and to acknowledge the medical missionary work that was done, a monument was erected in due gratefulness to these men and women so as to inspire future generations to continue the medical missionary legacy. It has been 50 years of sacrifice, challenges, much work, sweat, sleepless nights, tears and cries, sickness and death, but also of happiness, smiles and laughs, hugs and kisses. Today we celebrate 50 years of hospital services. We do so with the same mission and dedication that our founders had. Today, by the divine grace, we consecrate ourselves to the medical missionary work, making Christ the divine healer and our leading physician. <laughs>